Welcome friends. Let's see about postpartum hemorrhage today. By quantitative definition, postpartum hemorrhage is blood loss more than 500 ml during normal delivery or more than 1000 ml during caesarean section. But clinical definition says that postpartum hemorrhage is when the general condition of the patient gets affected due to blood loss. That is, that would be tachycardia or hypotension. According to the ACOG definition, if there is drop in HB by 10% or PCV by 10%, then we call it as PPH. The incidence is almost 1% in all the hospital deliveries. Primary PPH is the PPH or bleeding which takes place within 24 hours of delivery. That is divided into third stage hemorrhage which is before the placenta gets delivered and true PPH that is the bleeding which happens after the placental delivery and secondary PPH which happen or the bleeding which takes place after 24 hours of delivery. Causes of PPH mainly the four T's to remember tone, trauma, tissue and thrombin. Tone is atony, uterine atony is the most common cause of PPH. So once we say PPH, uterine atony. Trauma, there can be trauma in 10 to 20% cases to cervix, vagina, perineum. Rupture of uterus is also included in trauma. Tissue, if there is any tissue retained uterine cavity, retained in the uterine cavity, that will lead to profuse bleeding after the delivery of the placenta as well. Thrombin, if there is coagulopathy or DIC, that will lead to PPH. What are the risk factors? Very important slide. Please remember all the causes if possible. Grand multipari, uterine, uterus is flabby, malnutrition, anemia, over distended uterus. Remember this so you can remember all the causes which lead to over distension like polyhydramnus, multiple pregnancy, macrosomia, all will lead to PPH. If there is any uterine anomaly that uterus will not retract, fibroid uterus, avoid retraction or it will prevent the uterus from getting retracted. Precipitate labor which is within two hours or prolonged labor for longer time the uterus is in labor anesthesia and operative deliveries and last but not uh, it is again very import important severe preeclampsia and abruption which leads to PPH IUD may lead to PPH because of DIC now obstetric hemorrhage can lead to either shock renal failure Sheehan syndrome where there is anterior pituitary necrosis that leads to lactation failure and secondary amenorrhea and sometimes it may lead to DIC. Now how to manage this PPH? It's an obstetric emergency. We have to always be ready for management of PPH. No doctor on this earth can say that I can deliver but I cannot manage PPH. You have to know the treatment of PPH. Without that you should not call yourself an obstetrician. First thing, manage the general condition of the patient. The moment you see that she is bleeding excessively, pulse, BP, evaluate, you have to manage her GC first. So all the parameters to manage that. Call for help. Don't be afraid. Send the messages that there is an emergency. Call for help. Large bore axis, IV cannula is must, preferably on both the sides, if not at least on one side. Start pushing crystalloids till the blood gets arranged. Put a catheter that will tell you that how kidneys are functioning, how is the output. Immediately send blood for hemoglobin. Cross matching, RH typing must be there before the patient delivers. Look, examination, do it. Look for the placenta. It's out or it's still in. Where is it? How is it? It's coming retained, adherent. Whether the patient is, a, patient is in shock or not yet, you have time to decide the further management. Source of bleeding. If you can find it out, it's, it's the bleeding coming out of uterus. Mostly the reason is atonic uterus. So let's evaluate other things. Remove the placenta, check uterine cavity, lower genital tract, make the uterus contract and treat hypo hypovolemia simultaneously. Fluids are going, you are making the uterus contract by either bimanual massage or giving drugs. Active management and the traditional management of third stage, we give routinely oxytocin. But over here we need to add on to that because even after giving them, the uterus is atonic. Manually stimulate, bimanual massage. Ergometrin or Syntometrin. Remember all these drugs because MCQs will ask these questions that what is the treatment. You have to again repeat with Harjan 0.2 mg IV if you want. Oxytocin till 40 units drip you can give 10 units intramuscular you can repeat. If still the response is not that good 
go for injection prostudin that is carboprost pgf2 alpha 250 micrograms you can repeat the doses thrice with a gap of 6 uh, 30 minutes in between you can also give it intramyometrically you can put tablet mesoprostol per rectally 1000 mg stat and that will take care of atony most of the times so medicine these drugs methargin centometrine oxytocin carboprostol that is uh, prostadin or carboprost and misoprostol please don't miss or forget these names this is a chart which tells us pph the moment start giving oxytocin and uterine massage attorney in almost 90 percent cases just think that if you are managing attorney and the response is not that good then the thing the causes you should rule out is there any tear is the placenta retained still or is there any coagulopathy these are side arms but the main arm is management of attorney so we have given iv fluids we are giving catheter is in situ we have repeated the oxytocin by manual massage is going on what next if the bleeding is under control good if it's not then think of other steps by manual compression still continuing then we can think that maybe we can use hydrostatic condom tamponade that acts on the uterus maintains the pressure and thus the bleeding surface gets the bleeding stops from there or we can go for compression sutures that kind of b lint sutures or then systemic devascularization by operative procedures like ligation of uterine artery ovarian artery or internal iliac and if that also fails then we have to think of obstetric hysterectomy so this is in short management now we are going to see all these things in detail balloon tamponade it exerts pressure inside the uterine cavity very effective if the uterotonics fail easy to use low resource setting and safe alternative to uterine packing but if you don't have this uterus can be packed just to have that pressure effect other procedures we have this compression sutures where absorbable suture material is used to oppose both the uterine walls so that they can act on each other as pressure effects the sutures used are b lynch breast suture in this suture goes from anterior to posterior side they exactly like the braces which you wear on the suits cho suture where the square sutures cho or square sutures where again the principle is the same both the anterior and posterior walls of the uterine cavity they are opposed so that they can maintain pressure on each other and the uterus will not get relaxed the compression suture the advantage is preserves future fertility in other circumstances suppose you go for hysterectomy there is a question that if patient is young nulli paris or multi uh, primary gravida then you don't want to sacrifice the uterus so they give you advantage of conserving the fertility and menstrual function simple and quick to perform very easy we have to just take the opposing sutures disadvantage in some cases it has been noticed that it may cause uterine wall ischemia if they are too tight and thus necrosis of the uterine walls if this also fails then we have to go for systemic devascularization we all know uterus has main supply from uterine and ovarian during pregnancy ovarian is almost the same as uterine so i get both these vessels uterine and ovarian on both the sides if still the surface is bleeding then you have to go for internal artery like internal iliac vessel ligation this procedure is little difficult to perform but by practice everyone masters this one and a gynecologist should always know how to do internal iliac ligation if this also fails and uterine atony still persists then we have to go for obstetric hysterectomy usually it is done subtotal because it's a quick procedure emergency we don't have time much to dissect so subtotal obstetric hysterectomy has to be done there is this new method where selective artery embolization can be done this is one gelatin sponge is injected into the bleeding vessels until the stasis of flow is targeted and this and even in internal iliac ligation what happens is when the vessels are ligated the blood supply is through collaterals but the the effect is that the arterial circulation gets converted into venous circulation so the pressure falls and thus there is time for clot formation and even the blood loss decreases so these are the procedures which we do to manage atony of the uterus now let's see about the other causes of pph like retained products of conception placenta accreta pelvic hematoma cervical injury uterine inversion and ruptured uterus occasionally 
So let's see one by one. Retain placenta, almost 2% of deliveries. Check the placenta if it is adherent or if it is in the uterine cavity and not yet separated. Then you can introduce your hand in a cone-like fashion. Find the plane, just insinuate your fingers and then do sliding movements, slicing movements and separate the complete placenta and take it out. Preferably to be done under anesthesia to avoid the vagal syndrome. Check the placenta. If it is in the cervical canal, you can take it out. Antibiotic coverage is must. Senior, if called, would be of added benefit. In placenta accreta, we cannot separate the placenta because here the trophoblast has invaded the myometrium. So in that case, if patient has completed family, hysterectomy would be treatment of choice. Some people mention simple excision of the site of the trophoblast invasion, but there are uh, not much of studies available on this. We can either do internal iliac ligation or simple, we can cut the cord as close as possible and leave the placenta inside the uterine cavity and later on we can give methotrexate to the patient. Hematomas, quite commonly found, small, big, all types, vulval and paravaginal hematomas, there can be infralivator hematomas or supralivator. Infralivator, they are those around vulva and perineum as well as paravaginal hematomas. They may, they also occur in ischio rectal fossa. Supralivator, they spread upwards and outwards beneath the broad ligament and they can be of huge size. These hematomas can also track backwards even into the retroperitoneal space. So usually if the hematoma is small, we can just use ice packs or press pressure dressings and appropriate analgesics and it will get absorbed. But for which we have to be very sure that it is of the same size, it's not increasing in size, then only we can do conservative management. Otherwise, every patient who delivers complaining of throbbing pain at the site of episiotomy, please go have a look. If there is hematoma, please see what is the size. If it is increasing in size, if it is causing effect on her general condition, she is having tachycardia or hypotension, it is always better to explore the patient under good light, preferably in good OT where light is good and all the facilities of anesthesia as well as blood transfusion are available. Hematoma is usually more than 5 cm size. We do surgical intervention. Technique, then open the wound of episiotomy sutured or if it is without that, then take an incision inside the vagina. Explore the cavity, scoop out the clots, look for the bleeding vessel, take a figure of head figure suture so that that bleeding vessel stops bleeding and then if this hematoma is detected within 24 hours of episiotomy suturing, then you can re-suture it back. Re-suture the wound back once you attain hemostasis. But if hematoma gets detected after 24 to 48 hours, then there is always a chance that infection has already been introduced. So in that case, let the hematoma be open, leave it open, put a drain and let it heal by secondary intention. There can be injuries to the cervix. After a vaginal delivery, there can be lacerations or bruising to the cervix. Cervix usually don't bleed, but still there can be. Deep lacerations and particularly those that involve the vaginal vault, they should be managed in the theater under anesthesia. Repair of cervical tear, good visibility, right angle retractors and ring forceps or sponge holding forceps are to be used. I would advise that after each instrumental delivery, that means after vacuum or forceps delivery, it is mandatory that we go and explore the cervix, that is called as stressing of the cervix. Because when we use instruments at that time, cervical trauma is quite common. So go and explore the cervix completely. If there is any trauma, you can immediately repair the cervical laceration or tear. The cervix often looks damaged, but it's rarely associated with very heavy bleeding. That's the same thing again. Ventus should be applied after full dilatation. That will reduce the chances of cervical injury. Uterine rupture. Especially in cases where there is previous scar on the uterus or uh, the scar may be of previous cesarean section or more likely if it is hysterotomy scar or myomectomy scar where the cavity was open. In such cases, there is a fear that the scar will rupture either during pregnancy, late gestation or most of the times during labor. 
patient she will complain of continuous abdominal pain there would be vaginal pv bleeding the classical signs are contraction suddenly stops once the uterus ruptures and throws the baby out or maybe the baby is inside contraction ceases and the fetal heart pattern becomes abnormal so that will tell us that the uterus may have ruptured sometimes even there can be iud in case of suspicious or suspicion of uterine rupture the best thing is to go for immediate laparotomy if possible if the rent is repairable then repair the rent if it is not possible then you have to sacrifice the uterus and hysterectomy has to be done that is obstetric hysterectomy uterine inversion this is again a complication where a shock is a rule it can be because of bleeding that is hypovolemic shock or it can be neurogenic because the ovaries also gets pulled when the there is acute inversion of the uterus so if there is shock there is if there is inversion there is shock it probably is the most common cause of shock in third stage of fourth stage of labor the patient may be shocked out of all proportion of uh, to the visible blood loss if the placenta is adherent please don't play with the placenta let it be here just try to push the uterus back because separating that placenta will cause more bleeding immediately try to replace the uterus back through the cervix by manual compression method if it is possible without anesthesia do it if it's not then under anesthesia if it is not going at all then we can use hydrostatic methods the most commonly used hydrostatic method is o sullivan's please remember these names because again on inversion there are mcqs common cause of shock what are the methods used to repair the uterine inversion so hydrostatic method is o sullivan's and abdominal surgery method there is huntington's procedure and holton's repair if the patient still continues to bleed after managing the attorney after ruling out trauma to cervix vagina uterus and still she is bleeding then think of coagulopathy maybe that's the reason investigate confirm if there is coagulopathy then you have to correct it with blood transfusions as well as with ffp cryo precipitate and platelets if coagulation is normal then consider embolization dic you have to always remember it at the back of your mind and correct it if if you feel that the patient is in dic so that was a marathon revision of pph and that finishes our topic and i hope you understood it thank you